Hey, how's it going, guys? Sean Mathis here. I'm the CEO and founder of the Supercharged Social Camp, and I really appreciate you guys taking some time to be with me today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to use Facebook ads to enhance your direct mail campaigns and six reasons why you want to be using Facebook ads to enhance your direct mail. So direct mail is probably one of the oldest pieces of direct marketing uh, that, that business owners have access to. But what we've noticed over time is that we're losing a vast majority of the responses on direct mail because of how readily information is on uh, the internet and social media. And so what, what uh, combining the, the social media ads uh, with the direct mail is it allows us to hit the customer in both places on direct mail in their mailbox and what I call their digital mailbox on Facebook, which would be their newsfeed. So getting impressions when they log on to, to Facebook as well. And so there's going to be a couple of things that we'll accomplish here when, as we set these ads up. Um, number one is we're going to have multiple, uh, multiple times that we uh, with impressions. So we're going to, again, see them. The, they're going to see our ads not only in their mailbox, but also in their, um, in their newsfeed. And it's also going to allow us, for those who aren't as tech savvy, we still get them in the mailbox. And then those who ignore direct mail, we then get them on social media. So it allows us to have an, an all-encompassing uh, range for which we're reaching uh, when it comes to our, our mailing list. All right, so let's look at, uh, let's look at first how we're going to do this. So we're going to look at the mechanics. I'm going to walk you through the presentation, and then I'm also going to um, show you on my ads manager the step-by-step -step of exactly how to do this. All right, so the first thing that we got to do is we've got to prepare the mailing data for the upload into Facebook. So if you're using direct mail, you know that uh, value, the, that data is valuable for marketing, especially on Facebook. Um, there's 15 different identifiers that Facebook is able to use and, and match that data and find the corresponding profile to, uh, uh, to match up with, with the person on your list. So you want to begin by uh, you know, setting up the import in your ads manager or your business manager by creating a CSV file. Um, the goal here is to compile as much data as you can for Facebook uh, to, so that you give, the more you give Facebook to work with, the easier it becomes to find those profiles uh, to match up on, on the list. So the identifiers that they have is going to be email, phone number, first name, last name, city, state, country, date of birth, year of birth, age, uh, zip code, gender, mobile advertising ID, and the Facebook app user at, uh, ID. So you're probably not going to have some of this data, um, but obviously, you know, be mindful of these 15 identifiers because uh, whenever you buy a list or if you're if you're um, you know trying to upload a list, just know this is the data that that Facebook can use. So the more pieces you have, the easier it is for Facebook to find those users. So because you're working from a mailing list, at a minimum, you should have at least the zip codes um, and names as well as the addresses. But you know, however, the more data that you have, the better. Um, you can create the uh, CSV, in a, uh, CSV file in a spreadsheet program like Excel. Um, I think Google Sheets uh, allows you to do it as well if you don't have uh, Microsoft Office uh, on your computer or you know, whatever uh, the Apple format is there. Just make sure you put it in a CSV. Second thing we need to do is we need to create a Facebook custom audience based on the data that we have. So after we import the CSV file, you can then use that to create a custom audience. In Facebook, uh, open Ads Manager or the Business Manager, uh, go to the Audience, uh, the audience uh, button, and you know, you'll be able to find in your frequently used tabs that there's going to be a uh, the little menu button here, and then you go over to Assets, and then click on Audiences. Um, to set up the audience, you're going to create audience and then select custom audience from the drop down list in the pop up window that appears. Um, and then you'll choose customer file. And so I'll show you guys what that looks like again in the demonstration uh, when we're done with the presentation here. But here's the, uh, the, the next button. Once you go to um, audiences, you'll select customer file. And then once we've done that, um, you're going to be asked for the source, and what you do is select add customers from your own file, right, which is here, and then um, you'll, you'll go through the steps of importing those, uh, allowing Facebook some time to uh, 
find those to scrape there to scrape the site and find those uh, those corresponding identifiers. Um, the map will allow you to uh, make sure all the custom uh, all the uh, headers on the columns are matching up. And so you can make sure that uh, all the data is there that Facebook is going to need. So you go through the list and make sure that Facebook recognizes and maps the fields correctly. And then you'll want to use your uh, to build your audience. Ignore the fields that aren't relevant. Um, but again, you at least want to do names, zip codes, uh, and email. And uh, anything that you have beyond that is just going to make it easier for Facebook to make sure they have the right profiles and as many profiles as they can find out of that list. So they may not find all of them, but uh, they're pretty good at finding the vast majority of people that uh, do have an active profile on their, uh, their Facebook account. All right, so here's what the mapping uh, step looks like after that, uh, the previous step there. As you go to map out these fields, uh, if you, again, if you have content that you know, doesn't have a, a drop down in Facebook, then you just put select do not upload. So you only need to upload the corresponding identifiers. So step three is we're going to set up a distinct landing page for the direct mail and for the Facebook ads. Okay. You're going to have two separate ones so that we can track better um, our response rate on both and we can see the effectiveness of the, uh, the Facebook ad campaign as it relates to uh, the direct mail response. All right. So when you're combining direct mail with Facebook ads, you're going to want to set up two landing pages, uh, one for the, uh, the direct mail response and then another one for um, the Facebook ad response. The, uh, the two separate destinations, you'll be able to manage the response to the two media types. Um, again, one from, from just a direct mail and then one from seeing it on Facebook. And you can see how much of an impact the Facebook ads have and how many people you bring in through that versus just from the mailing. So if you don't already have a tool to create landing pages, um, you you want to consider investing in one like this is a must have you need to have this because um, ad agencies will charge you a fortune to build landing pages and you can build an unlimited number of landing pages with you know our CRM tool um, you know, if you want to if you want to message me Sean uh, at sellingwithsean.com for information about our CRM that has landing pages and forms that you can build um, lead pages is also a fantastic um, profile or a fantastic site to, to create very easy templated um, uh, landing pages. Uh, it takes you, you know, two, three sec you know, two, three minutes to set up a landing page using a lead pages account. Um, at the end here, I'm going to have a link for you for a 15 day free trial at, uh, at lead pages. Um, and, and then I'll also I'll give you 50% off of the um, lead pages, landing pages 101 program that I created specifically around those who are new uh, to lead pages and how to set up the, uh, uh, the lead pages account, how to set up your landing pages, how to integrate your email list, uh, your email provider, whether it's MailChimp or Constant Contact or Aweber um, and uh, tons of different strategies uh, with lead pages that that, that program is you know, you can have, we can have a whole call just on landing pages, uh, but it's very important that you have it. Um, again, I'll provide links here at the end of the, the program for you uh, so that you can follow those. But, um, you know, it, it's really critical that you have a very good landing page set up um, because this is your basically your storefront to these folks as they go to your landing page from these campaigns. They're going to instantly judge your um, your company based on how you present that landing page. And so it's going to be really important that you have a solid, uh, a solid page set up in a system there to capture these leads because all of your money will be spent in vain if they go to a page and they don't convert or they, you have a bad presence or the page doesn't work or something like that. So it's, it's very critical um, also uh, to be able to get to your, your analytics and having your only page account will allow you to see the, uh, the distinct, the um, distinct analytics for each of the pages that you set up. All right. So number four, we're going to segment our custom audience for Facebook and for remarketing. All right. So after the landing pages are set up, you can refine your targeting to high value segments of your master mailing list, namely those who visited uh, one of the landing pages that you set up but didn't respond to the conversion point or the call to action, um, whether that was watching a video, downloading a coupon, um, entering their email, setting an appointment, whatever that whatever that call to action was for you, um, 
you can retarget people based on their actions on the actual landing page. So to target the segments, what you're going to do is create uh, two additional custom audiences. Uh, the audience targets uh, abandoned mailers, um, which are those who responded to your mail offer but abandoned the call to action on the landing pages. And then the other audience is going to be abandoned Facebook users, right? So those who responded to the Facebook ads but left the landing page before taking action, all right? So we're going to be able to have all of these different analytics that we're going to set up um, by using this strategy from which landing page they went to, which uh, offer they're responding to, whether it was direct mail or whether it was Facebook, right? And then we're going to be able to track what happens with those customers once they go on to the landing page. Did they convert or did they not convert, all right? So the process to create these audiences is very similar to the creating the first audience that we just did. And I'm going to walk you again through after the presentation step by step of how to do those. But um, you'll want to base each new audience on website traffic and set the audience parameters to people visiting certain web pages but not others. All right, and I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, and then you'll be able to specify what pages to include and exclude in the uh, uh, in the section, uh, you'll just select the URL of the landing pages, and then in the excluded section, you'll specify the URL or you know custom event or whatever it was for that call to action piece. But here's what the screenshot looks like of the custom audience that you'll be setting up. Um, you know which which campaigns they went to, uh, which pages, but not other the web pages. So typically, what you do is you use a thank you page after they register, and that will let you track the uh, users that actually filled out the, uh, the call to action button and uh, went to the, the thank you page and created that, uh, completed that call to action. So if uh, people see the thank you page, obviously they filled out the form, which would be the only way they got to the thank you page. Um, you'll use that option instead of the, um, the, if you're using an event, you'll use the custom event um, option rather than the thank you page. But uh, you know, for instance, you know, including mail, uh, including uh, instead of making an online purchase or filling out a form, the user downloads a coupon or watches a video, right? That would be the custom event. So after you set the parameters for each remarketing audience, you're going to give your custom audience a name and create the audience. So next thing we need to do is we need to coordinate the timing of the direct mail and the Facebook ads, okay? Timing, timing of the sequence of the mailer and then the Facebook ads is important. So after the, the uh, mailers... Uh, reach homes, recipients need to uh, need time to get an impression and then respond um, or abandon or whatever the case might be, um, you know, or have enough recall so that they start getting the, uh, getting sort of the Facebook ads, that they're more likely to react because the Facebook ad isn't their first impression with your uh, campaign. So much of the delivery window for direct mail is dedicated by, uh, dictated by the post office, um, and, you know, what type of, of mail that you sent out and how much you paid for it and where it's going and things of that nature. But after you deliver uh, your mailer the, uh, to the mailing facility, you need to basically allow one to two weeks for delivery, and then you'll start your Facebook ad campaign. So you want to kick that off to uh, start at that time. Um, if you're planning campaigns with multiple uh, mail drops, then you can stagger the drops and update your uh, Facebook ads accordingly. All right, so the next step is that we're going to align the creative uh, to the audience. So before you start your campaign, you need to take one more critical step, um, which is creative. Campaign elements should have similar look and feel across direct mail, landing pages, and the Facebook ads. So you need to make sure that the imagery you're using and uh, you know, the call to actions, the language, uh, is, is consistent across the uh, actual postcard or, or letter that you're sending, the landing page, uh, and then the Facebook ads as well. So you want to make sure that the content is relevant to each of your three audiences. So those who haven't visited, uh, visited the landing page but may have glanced at the mailing, those who visited the landing page but didn't convert, um, and then those who visited the landing page and converted. So for a long campaign, uh, you want to mix up the copy and the visuals to test different messages to the three different populations. Um, try a soft ask to those who have received the mailing but have, uh, haven't visited the landing page. Uh, versus a more direct, urgent ask to those who responded to the mail list, but, um, you know, they went to the ad but did not complete their registration form or whatever it was that they called action. All right, so next thing is that we need to go ahead and launch the campaign and we're going to monitor the performance. All right, the last step is to load the creative 
and turn on the campaign. So keep an eye on how frequently each ad is served and how your ad is performing from click through to conversion. Right? So depending on the size of the audience, frequency could be a challenge. You might need to throttle budget, uh, manage the daily ad serving, or rotate creative frequently if you've got a really small audience. Okay? Um, the entire campaign isn't being served via Facebook. Uh, your ad rotation may be less, uh, far less frequent. All right. So bonus tip, if you, get, uh, if you want to get really fancy, you can add a third channel by including an email campaign for the same audience. All right. So let's look at six more reasons why we want to use. So now we've covered how, but let's look at why we want to, uh, to use Facebook ads to help with the response rate of the direct mail. All right. So number one, we want to lift the response rate. So your offer is now showing up on Facebook's desktop and mobile news feeds for your targeted audience and it's in their mailbox. So this extends the life of the, of the direct mail campaign, giving you additional opportunities, additional impressions, um, and an additional channel for those on your mailing list to respond. Right? So you want to, number two, you want to keep, uh, keep up with your more uh, digital responsive audience. So some people are just not responsive to direct mail. They just throw it away. So if you're like me, I don't even look at the direct mail. I just throw it in the trash if it's not something uh, pertinent to me. But now you've been able to increase your exposure to those individuals who are like me and are more digitally focused. You can now have that same mailer and you're able to hit them in the digital space where they may be more responsive. Uh, number three is that we want to reach the right audience at the right time. So not only is the content showing up on Facebook, but your ads will display uh, on your audience's feed during times where they have shown uh, to be particularly active, increasing the likelihood that they're going to take notice. Number four, we're going to uh, encourage immediate action, right? So there's potential for instant engagement online by adding a call to action to the advertisement, um, which increases your uh, sense of urgency. Uh, and it also allows us to get that immediate return on investment uh, with the digital response only or with the mail response only, we're kind of, uh, it takes longer for that sales process to end because they have to remember to take action from whatever it was on the postcard, whether that was call you, whether it was go to the website, watch the video, schedule an appointment, whatever the case might be. Um, whereas with Facebook, we can have it right there and it's they're one click away from uh, completing the call to action instantly. All right. So we're going to be able to learn more and track our results much better using the digital uh, f format as well. So by marketing across channels, you're able to gain valuable insights to what most of your, uh, uh, you know, what's most important to your customers. And this is going to help you make insightful decisions on uh, how to make the most of your marketing budget. So, you know, with, with direct mail only, we have to make a lot of guesses and a lot of assumptions um, about our customers and what they want and what kind of actions they're taking versus digital, we can, we can uh, track every single click along the way. We can know exactly what they're looking at. We can know how long they stayed on the sites. We can get their IP addresses. We can get um, you know, a lot more detailed information uh, about the customer that way. Um, so your ad appears in the newsfeed. You know, your Facebook direct response ads will uh, only appear in the newsfeed as opposed to off to the side like a lot of other Facebook ads. So this gives your ad a more organic feel to it, but also increases the chances that it's going to be noticed. So in conclusion, all right, the Harvard, Harvard Business did a, uh, did a research on this and found that on average, direct mail and email, uh, as well as uh, Facebook campaigns together, um, increase the response rate by 25%, as well as the order value by more than $3 per lead um, when using direct mail and digital response. Uh, on Facebook and email as well. So let's look at some resources here. Uh, landing pages 101. Again, that's going to show you how to um, how to use the landing page software, lead pages. Um, tons and tons of resources. There's over 30 hours of content on uh, landing pages 101. Um, I've got a 30-day free trial for you guys here. Um, using lead pages to try it out. Again, it doesn't matter what landing page service you use, you just need to have a good one. And, and lead pages is the one that I use, um, as well as uh, SharpSpring CRM, which I am a uh, platinum provider for. So if you're interested in SharpSpring.com, just take a look at it and message me. I can save you 50% off of the retail price there on their website. And then um, I would love to have you guys in the Supercharged Social Camp. Uh, I'm gonna give you free day, uh, 15 days free um, 
to, to join us here. There's over 300 training videos at uh, in Supercharged Social Camp right now, um, and we're constantly adding new trainings. Here are the details of that program. Um, we do uh, two monthly coaching calls uh, every single uh, second and fourth Wednesday of the month, and uh, that's an opportunity for me and you to work one-on-one uh, -on -one together, as well as uh, access, 24-7 access to all of the mar marketing content on, um, on Facebook, on uh, custom audiences, on uh, different campaign objectives. We're going to cover... Um, and take a deep dive into the Facebook ads manager, the business manager. Uh, we're going to take a deep dive into the landing page services, marketing automation tools, email uh, drip campaigns, ad copy, uh, uh, targeting, you know, targeting, uh, targeting training, how to target your perfect customer, um, how to write effective ad copy that's going to help you convert your leads. Um, you know, our, our average agent uh, that, that joins us, uh, whether it's insurance, real estate, mortgage, um, Marketing agency owners are seeing anywhere between a 20 and 40 percent increase in their business in just 60 days of working with me, uh, guys. I, you know, I've got tons and tons of, of strategies to uh, that have been tested and proven to generate leads for you and your clients if you're a, a marketing agency. And uh, you know, 98 percent of my business comes specifically from Facebook. Um, you know, I manage over thirty thousand dollars a month in Facebook ad spend. Uh, I've got probably some of the most experience that you'll ever uh, encounter, especially at this rate of just $99 a month. Uh, so you're going to get two coaching calls a month. You're going to get 24-7 access. We have a private Facebook group with uh, all of our, our business owner clients uh, who are part of Supercharged Social Camp. Uh, you're going to be able to mark. You're going to be able to mastermind with them, share best practices, share campaign ideas, um, get connected with uh, with uh, some of the best practices across multiple different industries. We're going to look at organic strategies. We're going to look at uh, Facebook advertising strategies, audience insights, perfect customer targeting, ads manager setup, just tons and tons. It's really hard to, to do the program justice uh, because there literally is just so much content in there uh, for you to, to digest uh, at a convenient time, whenever you want, wherever you want, whether it's on your mobile, on your laptop, on your desktop. We've got the... Uh, You'll have instant access to all of the training videos. You know, I encourage you to take a look at some of the, uh, the testimonials that we have. And uh, it's always money back guarantee. If you join, uh, if you, you know, I always tell people, give it 90 days. If at the end of 90 days you don't like it, let me know and give you a full refund. I have yet to refund anybody. Um, at this point, you know, we've got a 100% success rate. Um, I really, really encourage you to take a look at this program and consider the ongoing training because things are changing rapidly on uh, social media and digital marketing. If you're not staying plugged in with uh, a mentor or a coach that can uh, guide you along the way, um, I'm willing to share all of my knowledge and don't hold anything back. A lot of people that run these types of programs, uh, they don't give you all the good stuff. They really give you just the most basic of information. But I literally teach you everything that I know in here. I will help you with any of your ad campaigns. Make sure that you're getting leads. And you'll know exactly how I run and manage all of the Facebook ad campaigns that I do for my business as well as my clients uh, that we're managing as well. And we oversee uh, more than 100 active clients uh, at any given time, helping them with their ad strategies and uh, their lead generation. Would love to have the opportunity to serve you in that way, so please check that out. All right, so let's look at the walkthrough here of how to create these custom audiences. All right. All right, so we're in our ads manager here. Let me just uh, go to assets. So we go to our um, menu here. We're going to go to audiences. And then we're going to click create audience. We're going to create a custom audience. All right, and then we're going to go to customer file. 
and then we're going to add customers from your own file. Okay, and then here's the identifiers again. Then you upload your CSV. Once you do that, You go to the mapping side, all right, so we're gonna map out the columns. So first name, last name, email, phone number, company's not one, we'll go state, got that one. All right, so we'll upload and create. So I found 277 contacts. All right, and then it's gonna tell you when it's ready, you'll get a green light when you're ready for the, uh, when you're ready to start running ads to it, all right? And then we'll go to one that's already created so that you can see the next steps. So we'll click this one here, and then the next one we're going to do is we're going to uh, to run an ad to this audience. So once you upload it, you'll go to create ad, and that's going to allow you to start the ad sequence. And we'll have a uh, subsequent training to show you detailed walkthrough of how to set up an ad. Um, this one, we really just want to cover the, the uploading the audience pieces. Um, so the next one will be create audience. We'll go to custom audience again. And this one is to set up the website traffic. So uh, this one is going to be people who meet any of the following. And we're going to say people who People who have visited specific web pages. So this one we'll put in for people who visited the URL the landing page that we create for the direct mail, we'll put that one in there. And then we'll also create another one with just the, um, the landing page URL for the Facebook campaign, right? So that'll get both of those. And then what we'll do is we'll have a thank you page for each of those pages as well that are independent so that when they go to the landing page from the direct mail piece, um, and enter their information on that landing page, they'll then hit the thank you page that goes with that landing page, and you'll know anybody that hit the thank you page completed the order, right? And then anybody who hit the, um, anybody who hit the um, landing page that did not hit the thank you page, then you'll know um, those are people who you need the more aggressive call to action to, okay? so. You'll have you'll hit the exclude button, and that's where you'll have people who have visited specific website uh, web pages, but not others, right? And you use the include and exclude button uh, to accomplish that. And then if you're using the Facebook um, uh, lookalike audience, this is the next thing that you want to do. So as we create our custom audience, and we'll do a, a training on the custom audience, the lookalike audiences as well. But once you create your custom audience, what you can do is you can upload a uh, list of 
look alike. So we know that birds of a feather flock together, right? So if they filled out, uh, people filled out your form, um, or you have them on the landing page, then what we can do is tell people, or if we have them on the mailing list, we create the custom audience. We can tell Facebook, hey, I want you to find people that attribute the same, that have the same attributes as the people on this list. And what they can do is they can find that uh, based on all those profile identifiers, they can say, hey, based on the profiles that we found, these users exude the similar uh, identifiers as well as online activity. And guys, you don't necessarily have to understand how Facebook accomplishes this, but you can understand they are the best in the business when it comes to uh, creating lookalike profiles. They have so much data on their users, what pages they go to, what ads they respond to, what pages they follow. So they are really, really good at uh, creating these lookalike audiences. So what you're able to do now is I can say, hey, I've got this list of people and I want Facebook to find another, uh, all the other users on Facebook that fit these attributes. And you, then you can drill that down and say, okay, of those people, I want to make sure I only include the people in this particular region because it's going to find people all over the world that fit those, uh, that fit within that, um, uh, fit within those parameters. So um, if you want to do a regionalized campaign, maybe you only serve Texas. So I could say, hey, you know, I, I want everybody that looks like this, but I need to drill that further down just to the state of Texas. Um, you can do that as well. So once you create the lookalike audience, you can then drill down further within that audience by adding additional filters on top of it once you get into the ad creation process. So uh, it's definitely something that I want to point out to you guys and make sure that you're doing. So uh, for those of you that are in Supercharged Social Camp, um, or join us. I will help you with this process step by step and make sure that we upload all of your custom audiences um, and that you've done it correctly. Walk you through it um, on our coaching sessions that we have every Wednesday, or excuse me, the second and the fourth Wednesday. So we'd love to see you on the other side so I can help you with that. But either way, I hope this was valuable information for you and I hope that you find uh, you're able to put it to use in your business and start seeing up to 25% better response rate on your direct mail for those of you that are heavy direct mailers. Um, great way to uh, accentuate your, your, your mailing and enhance the results using the uh, Facebook ad campaign and the custom audiences.